Hey, it's Bonnie Lafrec at the Fitness Asylum. I want to talk to you about the three M's. Do you want to guess what they are? No, don't bother. I'll tell you what they are. So in the fitness industry, when we work with our clients, they could be strength goals or weight loss goals, we kind of bump up against the same three things over and over and over. And once you master what these really are, I think that you'll see your success rate go through the roof. You won't feel like you're spinning your wheels or that you're stuck or that you're looking around for the new diet, the new workout, the magic pill, the magic wand, the fairy, all that, no, all that stuff. You'll get it. You'll have all this information and it's going to work for you. And then you can see how it works with your relationships. You can see how it works with your career, your job, your ambitions, the finances, any part of your life, you can apply these three M's to. Mark my words. So, and, and not mark with an M, but number one, motivation, right? It's kind of a, it's kind of that buzzword like willpower and discipline and inspiration and all of those things. We're always looking on the outside for motivation, right? We are looking on Instagram and Facebook and a magazine and the internet and you know all over the place for motivation. In fact, we're hoping motivation shows up and knocks on the door to come get us. But the truth is motivation can only find you when you're taking action. You sitting on the couch waiting for motivation never ever works, right? Like the weather, motivation sometimes comes and goes. Sometimes it's sunny, sometimes it's rainy. It just is. And we still have to get up and go and function. We can't wait for the outside to come to us. So with motivation, I know you think it's something really spectacular. You think maybe I'm here to motivate you, right? That you're looking to me, Bonnie, say something motivational. Bonnie, come motivate me. Come even slap the food out of my hand. That's not going to work. What I can tell you is, you have it inside you, right? There is something that motivates you or that gives you great motive to reach your goals. Sometimes you might think about this as your why. Why is it important for you to fill in the blank? Why is it important to you to lose 10 pounds or 20 or 30 or 100? Why? Why do you want that? What will happen if you don't? Who will you be if you don't have the 30 pounds to lose? I mean, so we can go on and on with motivation, but I look at it at the root core of what is motivating you inside. What is your why? What is the greater motive? And motivation will come to you when you get out and start doing. You will be motivated by your own results, your own successes, even the small ones. So <clears throat> that's your first M, that's your takeaway. Think about that, that might be more than enough. You, you might turn this off right now and go, Bonnie, I got enough. What about the myth of moderation? So this is a big one. I, um, I always thought about eating, right? Eating in general, just the act of eating or particular specific foods and addiction. I always thought there was a connection there and now more and more I see it very interestingly because drug addiction is real. The opioid crisis is forcing us to take a really hard look at addiction and the drug addict that lives next door to us, the drug addict that's in our family, right? The drug addict that might be us even. So it's not a far cry to be like, I'm super addicted to sugar and I'm super addicted to drugs. They're, they're the same thing. Our brain perceives those the same way. And so if you, like me and a lot of my friends and clients have struggled to lose weight or to keep weight off, then you have to really be honest with yourself. And you can't listen, right? You don't listen. Don't be distracted by your friends or family or a so any kind of messaging you're getting elsewhere that says everything in moderation. Restriction is bad. Any diet that preaches restriction is wrong. Life is filled with restrictions. It just is. Life is filled with rules. Sometimes they're rules we put on ourselves. Just like if 
you wanted to quit smoking or you needed to quit drinking, then you're, you know, not drinking, you're not smoking, or you've decided to be a vegetarian or a vegan or you're paleo or whatever, we're always looking for the right path and lane for us that crowds out other things that do not help us. If that is restriction, it works. So I know we're all thinking, well, you know, life balance and you know, you don't need to be so black and white and you gotta live in the gray area. No, you don't. You really need to know yourself and know what works for you and stop trying to take that square peg into the round hole. You're always going to lose. The game of, I should say, it's the game of moderation. You can be moderate with things that you do not overeat or not overuse or not overindulge with, plain and simple, whatever it is. So as long as you understand that, you're going to go far reaching your goals and staying sane and healthy. There's nothing worse than being tortured, right? Your self-torture about craving sugar, right? Or craving cigarettes or craving alcohol, craving drugs or craving whatever you do. It is much easier to be 100% than 99% on your decision to leave certain things out of your life. And then the third M, if that wasn't enough, right? If you're not really seeing the full picture here, for your health and weight loss goals and then all the other things around it. The myth of maintenance, right? So a lot of us have lost weight before and a lot of us have found that weight again. Maybe all of it or some of it or more than. And a lot of different things happen, let's be honest. Sometimes you get injured, sometimes you have a major stress in your life and something throws off your routine. And all the things that were important to you and were high priority, like losing the weight, because it has to be a priority, right? It has to be very important to you. Something throws that off and then it's no longer a priority and it's not getting done. But if you've lost weight, all the things you did to lose the weight, everything, you will have to keep doing. Nobody likes that answer. I get it, you're probably now, you're gonna turn this off immediately and be like, I do not like that, Bonnie Lafrac. I do not like you and I do not like that answer. I'll soften it for you. All the things that you did to lose weight, you have to keep doing with perhaps, depending on who you are, a little bit of leeway, a little bit. It's, a li it's not what you think. You can't be good all week and then go off the rails all weekend. You, it's not going to work. It's going to catch up with you. Raise your hand if it already has. So you know this, but you're hoping I have a different answer. You're hoping that out there is this magic special diet that if you do it for a little while, that it works forever. How could that possibly be true? How could you study for a little while and then forever be learning and getting smarter? It doesn't work that way. It's constant. It's consistency over time not being perfect, being consistent. And so when you really think about motivation, moderation, and maintenance in these ways, in realistic ways, and things that you've, you can already prove in your own life, I think it will help you get to that next level and it will help you be true to yourself, not be looking around for the magic bullet because there is none, and really guide you on your way to sustained weight loss and better health. Hope that helps you. I'm looking forward to seeing your comments.